I wanted to do a quick video uh, to show you guys how I usually make a remix. Um, I've had a few people actually ask like on Reddit, uh, like what's the best way to, you know, use an actual song and then strip it down to the point where you can actually use it as its own tune mixed in with yours. Um, so there's a couple of things I always like to do. Uh, as you can see, this is for my um, Walk It Out remix, which I put out last week. Um, there's a lot of chopping, right? So like here is like the, the audio parts that I've used and I've split it into different tracks. Uh, it really comes down to what you want from the tune. So when I start, I always like to um, actually listen to the song and listen to the parts that have uh, um, you know, maybe just instrumental samples that I can loop, like this one right here. Uh, if you can, if you can hear it, uh, let me just turn this up a little bit. It's just like a looping sound. Right, so it's just like that intro that the actual song used, and I just have that looping. It makes a nice, uh, you know, like ambience in the background. Um, but then in terms of like the actual sound itself, uh, there's a few things I always do. I always scoop out the low end, as you can see here. Uh, this is just a stereo ADQ, so anything below, you know, this actually ramps up uh, throughout the song in a, f a few different times, depending on, um, like, you know, right here, this is the actual breakdown before the drop, the drop's over here. This is the, the vocal breakdown before, so I want to have a little bit of low end just so that you can hear like the, the tone of the voice. But then as it drops in, uh, you know, it, it starts to go up and kind of moves around based on um, what else is happening at that moment. Um, so I always do that. One other thing I always like to do is I always like to go in uh, on the master and use a width tool to listen to the sample along with my music in both mono and stereo. Uh, because I want to make sure that the audio, you know, since typically the audio you rip from like YouTube or whatever is going to be already mastered to some extent, um, it's going to have a pretty good uh, width, um, you know, like uh, range. Uh, it's going to be pretty wide. And uh, I mean, if you want your sound to be super wide, if you want the vocals of it to be super wide and, you know, have the rest of your mix mainly dominate in mono, you can do that. But just for uh, reference, it's usually good to go in here and actually listen to the tune um, in in mono and in stereo and see how the vocal sample actually like holds up with your tune. Uh, is it too wide? Is it too narrow? Does it complement? And then a few other things I like to do, um, of course, you know, using some sidechain compression to like the drums, it's going to be pretty important. Volume automation, uh, that's just for artistic effect, filtering as well. Um, I like to, uh, you know, put some delay on it. Crystallizer is a great plugin for uh, just using like granular echoes. And um, I think Hero Bus uses this one. I think I heard him talking about it before. Um, but uh, yeah, those are all good. And then, of course, automating some reverb uh, is something else I like to do. Um, there's another tool I like to use. I didn't actually use it on this one, but um, I have used it before. Uh, track spacer. Track spacer is really good for. Um, it's essentially a side chain compressor, uh, but it responds to frequencies. So this is a really good tool for um, like carving out parts of instrumentals for vocals to stand out. So basically, this tool will evaluate you know what frequencies of your vocals are the most prominent. And then it will scoop those frequencies out of any track on a ratio that you predefine, you know, and you can even tell it like ignore things below, uh, you know, 300 hertz, right? So that like, you know, the bass can still come out in your tune and it won't be compromised in any way. Um, but this is a great tool. Uh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, going in and just using the multi band at the end of the whole process just to listen to. Um, like what exactly is happening in each part of the of the stereo bands, uh, so that you can make sure that you know oh the vocals in this part aren't overpowering everything else, or you know like maybe my instruments that I'm using the drums I have, uh, you know aren't uh, overpowering the vocals so that where you can't hear them. So yeah, that's just some of the things I like to do. I hope uh, that kind of helped a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or uh, shoot me a message and I'll I'll help out. Peace.